Well, we won the league. We broke records left, right and centre. And we're now looking forward to a season in the National League, in the fifth tier of English football, and only one tier away from reaching our ultimate goal of the Football League. So, let's take a look at our record-breaking season review. Hello everyone and welcome to episode 18 of our Maidstone United Save. This will probably be a relatively short episode. Um, there are no games left because we've finished the season. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have a quick look at what happened in between us winning the title and the season finishing. I will have a look at our season review and then I'll discuss my plans for the squad for the for next season and also talk about a couple of players who may be on their way out. Um, we look at the last couple of games. I think the players may have drunk a little bit too much in their celebrations because four days after winning the league, we lost <laughs> lost our first game in since the 1st of February in the league. Um, two one defeat away at Dover. We were one nil up in that as well. Uh, but then we bounced back. We won 3-2 against Tombridge, 4-1 against Welling, and a 2-0 victory over Chippenham. Um, I changed around. I gave Eddie Beach his debut there. That game there, Welling game. Jack Barham, all four goals in the first 38 minutes. Scored a 10. And talking of Jack Barham, his season, he was unbelievable. Um, 62 goals in all competition from 50 starts and three substitute appearances. Only two assists, but never mind. He's a goal scorer. 7.63. In the league alone, he scored 53 goals. Um, it's unbelievable. Like, he's, if you look, he was he was a good striker in the first season for me. He scored 28 goals in 40 appearances in the league. Um, and if you look, he scored 29 in all appearance, in all competition. But this season, he's just been unbelievable. He's. I brought McGlynn in to challenge Barham for a place. I brought Byrne in, who can play in that position, like just in case Barham dropped off. And he's been. He's just. Uh, he's been a goal machine. A goal machine. We've got him on a new contract um, until the end of next season. So, hopefully, he can score a lot more goals in the level above. Just looking at the competition, we broke records everywhere. Um, if we look at the league table, the previous record for highest number of points in this division was 103. We beat that. Just we got 105. Um, yeah, um, what was I? No, oh, yeah, Jack Barham player stats most goals. He was 21 goals ahead of Freddie Hines in second. Um, no doubt who, who scored the most goals. Uh, Regan Booty. The highest average rating of the season with a 7.94. And the most assists with 27 assists. Um, clean sheets. If we go and have a look at the clean sheets, Brad House probably would have broken that record. Yeah, yeah, plenty of games to do it. But we, um, we changed the goalkeeper, didn't we, um, midway through the season. I've signed a new contract. Um, they offered me a new contract straight away. And yeah, we're looking forward to moving forward to the National League. One, one step away from achieving our ultimate goal of reaching the Football League. But let's have a look back. Our season review, our record-breaking season review. The new arrivals for last season, uh, players that we signed, Eddie Beach, 
Jack Byrne, James Carragher, Adam Lovett, Brad House, Sam Hill. They came in at the start of the season, along with Zito and Mooney. Um, our signing of the season was Brad House. Um, surprising, really. I thought Byrne would have got it. Uh, Byrne that we brought in from Liverpool. 31, appearance, 31 starts, 4 sub-appearances, 11 goals, 12 assists. That's 23 goal contributions at a 7.36. Eddie Beach, he got an 8.2 average rating, but he only played once. Um, James Carragher made the most appearances out of our signings on loan from Wigan. I'm probably going to look at trying to bring him in permanently. Uh, 7.26, 50, 52 appearances. 51 starts. He scored two goals for us, but he was solid in defence, so I'm probably going to look at trying to bring him in on a permanent. Adam Lovett came in from Sutton, made 12, 12 starts, 10 sub appearances at 7.04. To be honest, he's 7.04. I think that rating is because he played in a couple of games where we absolutely annihilated the opposition, because in a lot of games he was poor. But I'll make a decision on whether or not I'm going to keep him. He's down as a fringe player. Um, he wants to commit his future to the club, but I'm not sure what we're going to do about him yet. Brad House, 38 appearances, like we saw. Um, 15 clean sheets. Signing of the season. We were 7.03. Sam Hill. We'll go back to Bristol Rovers. I'm going to look at bringing in a new fullback. Um, Hill will be going, and Ben and Williams will be going as well. Adam Parks, who came in from Watford at mid-season, made 16 appearances and only a 6.96. Um, his rating is better than Brad House. Eddie Beach has signed a new contract, so I'm going to look at possibly offering Brad House a new contract as backup because... Maybe Adam Parks isn't the solution, although he, he is rated higher on the star rating and stuff. Dan Mooney came in from Ultram at 6.93. He's leaving us. He has already signed a pre-contract with TNS in Wales. Patrick Zito came in as a backup defender. 6.89 from 22 starts and 12 sub-appearances. Another one who probably isn't good enough for... The, le the level above us at the minute. May keep him around as a squad player, but we'll see. And then Matthews and Dreyer came in late in the um, season. They made well, Dreyer one start, three sub appearances. James Matthews, four sub appearances. I only brought him in at the end of March, just as backup for the squad because we were suffering a few injuries. Um, but most of the signings have done well. Um, Burn. Um, he signed the new contract, but he's very injury prone. I mean, he's he ended the season injured, I think. Oh no, he played the last game, but um, I think he suffered about four or five injuries. And no, he didn't play the last game. He ended the season injured. Um, this season's results, how it all unfolded. The FA Cup, we got knocked out in the second round by Wrexham. We were only tasked. We were only um, tasked. We were. Um, the aim was to reach the first round. We did that. We beat Morecambe in the first round. Lost in a narrow game against Wrexham. Average home attendance for the FA Cup was two thousand three hundred and eighteen. Only played two games at home. Jack Barham with seven goals, only a C plus. Even though we got to the second round, it's only a C plus, and the board are delighted. Surely, Maidstone get into the second round. Should have been higher than a C plus. The FA Trophy C plus again. That one. Ball expectation reached second round. We reached the fifth round in that, and suffered a one nil defeat against the team a whole division ahead of us, and only a C plus. But it was a season to remember, because it was a season of unlikely yet jubilant success at the Stones, who got off to a tremendous start in August that propelled them into first place. Providing them with the platform to go on and win the competition. And that's exactly what we've done. Moments to remember. Our biggest win was a 7-1 win away to Eastbourne Borough. 
The match to remember, 6-0 win away at Billericay. And the goal of the season was scored by Regan Booty in our first game of the new year, um, 2nd of January. It was his goal that secured his hat-trick for that game. The finances, club reputation has not changed. Sponsorship's gone up. Broadcast revenue is slightly down. I'm going to presume that's because of the season before we played Accrington in the FA Cup, and that may have been on the TV. I can't actually remember. Corporate and hospitality is up. Competition prize money is much more. Um, 59000 compared to 18000 Match day commercial and retail is up as well. Total merchandise sales, non domestic sales amount to 5,000 of this total, which in total was 53,000. Um, and there were 825 shirts sold. With Regan Booty being the number one, then Barham, Byrne, Deacon, and Phillips. All players that I'm hoping will be here next season as well. Although, as previously mentioned, we had that slight contract hiccup with Deacon. And mm, we've got a situation that may be arising with Regan Booty. How are we lined up? Team of the season. House in goal. Trotman, Carragher, Bradley Green, Hill, Phillips, Booty, Corn, Byrne, Deacon and Barham. Interesting that they put Booty on that side when I played him on that side all season. Same with Carragher. He's been on that side as well, but it's been swapped round. Um... Yeah, that is the team that we've played with all season, except for when House was dropped for the new goalkeeper to come in. But that is our team that we've played with. So that should have been our best 11. There ain't anything else that I would change about that. And hopefully, most of these players will be in next season. Trotman has signed the new contract. Booty, Deacon, Byrne... Uh, sorry, Be Booty, Burn, and Barham signed new contracts. Deacon, we had that um, little thing where we're going to offer him another contract at some point. Corn hasn't had a contract all season. He's been planning on a non-contract, a pay-as-you-play contract all season. Um, I could have released him at any time for, for nothing. I, I kept him around as a backup, and he's played... He's made 54 appearances, 54 starting appearances and one substitute appearance. He's made the most appearances out of anyone in our team this season. And he's at a 7.13. Star rating-wise, he isn't good enough for the National League. But his star rating really doesn't make him good enough for this league. So I'm probably going to offer him a new contract, even as a fringe player, just to keep him around and reward him for his solid performances this season. Um, out of these, Brett Carragher and Hill were on loan. Bradley Green's going to be gone. Um, probably. The accolades. Manager awards. I've won four Manager of the Month awards. And I'm hoping to win Manager of the Season as well. But um, that hasn't come up yet, I don't think. <laughs> um, no, it doesn't say anything. Unless I didn't get it. Fans player of the season, Regan Booty. Young player of the season, Jack Byrne. Signing of the season, as we've already seen, was Brad House. Goal of the season, Regan Booty. Top goal scorer, Jack Barham, with 62 goals. 32 assists for Regan Booty. 27 in the league, I believe. Regan Booty, 14 man in the match awards. Average rating of 7.9 gives him the highest average rating of the season. And the most passes completed per 90 minutes was Regan Booty as well with 77. So Booty taking all of the plaudits for this season, except for the amount of goals. Um, and so many records broken this season. Jack Barham for most overall goals scored by a player in a season. Barham most goals in the league in a season. Jack Barham most goals by a player in a match in the season. Um... Regan Booty most assists for a season. Brad House most clean sheets for a season. Um, he kept 20 in all competition. 14 player of the match awards for Regan Booty. Rory Deacon had the worst discipline in our record breakers though. 
Um, most overall league goals, I think that must mean, um, is Jack Barham with 81. And we broke record for the youngest player when we gave um, Kai Penny Fader, or Fader a debut at 16 years and 301 days old. We also broke the record for most points that we've ever got. Most points in the Vanarama National South. And I think most goals scored in the National, in the National South as well. History in the making. Hard, your hard work and effort paid off on the pitch and such a feat didn't go unrewarded at our end of season. Award ceremony. Top of the table. Goal difference of plus 71. 105 points from 46 games. See, Dulwich, most seasons, probably would have won the league with 91 points, but we were just too good this season. They say it's important to get off to a good start, but it rings as true as ever for Maidstone as they celebrate promotion. It's a quote from Damien Walker of the nonleaguefootballpaper.com. And to be honest, I am over the moon with that season. It We had a couple of little bumps along the way, but we did what we set out to do. Um, we were predicted to win the league. The club vision was that um, they wanted us to reach the playoffs. And to be honest, we've run away with the league. So we cannot be disappointed with that whatsoever. Um, but the minute the club vision and expectations is that they want us to fight bravely against relegation. So... As it looks next season, I'll probably be safe in a job even if we are in a relegation battle as long as we're fighting bravely against it. Um, we Remember I, s I said a second ago that with uh, a situation may be arising with Regan Booty. Bolton and Wimbledon both won him. Um, and I think they're both League One sides. If we have a quick look, um, Bolton are definitely in League One and Wimbledon are League One as well, yeah. So both League One sides, and Booty has come out and said that he would love Bolton to put in a bid for him. So we could end up losing our captain team leader and player of the season. Which isn't ideal when we're going to be moving up a level. I'm going to try and keep him. It did say in the in the thing that came up that they were looking at offering 37,000 for him. Well, he has a minimum fee release cost of 83,000 and he ain't going until that's reached. That's what I want for him. Um, cuz that way I'll be able to bring in a couple of replacements. My other plans for the squad, if we look at the depth at the end of the season, still says McGlynn's our best striker. I'm going to actually, how did he get on? Three goals for Falkirk. Six starts, four sub appearances at a 6.87. To be honest, he hasn't done anything to convince me that he's going to be able to score a ton of goals for us in the National League. Um, his attributes have all gone up but I've got a month or nearly two months just under two months until his contract runs out at the end of June for me to decide if I'm going to keep him or not um, other than that we've got Barham and Burn. Walters and Odesanya will be going um, Luque is currently in talk to a couple of Spanish clubs about leaving he's out of contract anyway uh, but uh, like I say, he's in a talk to a couple of Spanish clubs. Booty and Phillips will still be here. Um, Phillips now considered a four star rating. I thought he was a three and a half. Other than that, um, love it. We've got a decision to make on him. Gallagher will be going. Um, most of everyone else will be as well. Michael Phillips is actually our best defender. 
even though he's a defensive midfielder. And our other best defender, Carragher, is only on loan. I'm going to try and keep him, but at the minute we ain't got any money. So um, I do want to hold on to him. I do want to hold on to him. He's three and a half star rating. He's been very good for us this season. Um, other than that, it's just about strengthening and adding depth. Um, this season, we've had a f quite a few moments where we've had injuries and we've had to bring in players that are not good enough for us, not good enough for this level. Players like to Sean Waters, who his potential is there, but at the minute he's not. He's only a two-star emergency backup. He's actually, his potential has actually dropped down to three and a half stars. I think it was four before. So, although he can play anywhere, he's not the type of player who I'm going to take with me to the National League. He's already 23. His potential ability is just going to keep dropping if he isn't playing games, and he isn't going to play games for me. So, there is no point in keeping him at a club where he's not going to play. I want to bring in good quality players. I do. I do need to bring in a couple of fringe players or squad players or whatever but I need better quality I need more depth and we need a team that are going to keep us in the National League to be honest how good we were this season if we perform like that I believe that we stay in the National League anyway probably finish around mid-table in the National League but I don't want to be stuck in the National League for too long I want to have one season to build a team, keep us in that in that division, and in the second season, I want to be aiming for promotion to the Football League. Um, I don't want to be stuck in the National League. I don't want to come back down and then have to come back up again. The ultimate goal of this series is to get to the Football League, and I want to do it in as, as short a time as possible. And there are a couple of players we've got our eye on um, that we're having a little scout about for. But that will all be spoken about in the next episode. I'm going to play through pre-season. I'm going to get us up to the first day of the National League season. And I'll be back in the next episode to talk about the ins and outs in the transfer market. And show you our first game in the National League. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed that episode, please do leave a like, subscribe, comment below, and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye.